The turbine rotor is supported on journal bearings which are located at each end of the cylinder. It is essential that these bearings retain their correct alignment as the clearances between the rotating parts and the fixed parts of the machine are extremely small. A thrust bearing is located along with the journal bearing at the governor pedestal in order to locate the shaft and prevent movement in the axial direction. What do we mean by this? Well, in this single cylinder arrangement, the flow of steam through the turbine tends to push the rotor towards the generator. If this thrust was not contained, the rotating blades could conceivably come into contact with the stationary blades of the next stage and cause quite a catastrophe. To prevent this occurrence, a fixed collar on the shaft is held in position by lubricated thrust pads. During construction and maintenance of the machine, these pads are carefully set to ensure that the correct clearances exist between rotating and stationary parts. Allowance must be made for the casing to expand as it becomes heated by the steam flow. In a single cylinder machine like this, the normal method is to anchor the solidly at the low pressure end, that is at the turbine exhaust, and allow the front end pedestal to move forwards. In large machines, the expansion in this longitudinal direction may be over one inch, that is 25 millimeters. In this particular machine, the pedestal is fixed to a flexible support which allows the movement to take place. A more common arrangement on larger machines is to fit the base of the pedestal with sliding feet to allow free movement in the axial direction. Now let's take a close look at a typical rotor.